Good afternoon, this is Quintus Curtius, and welcome back to the Fortress of the Mind podcast. Fortaleza de Menchi would be Fortress of the Mind in Portuguese. I'm trying to think what it would be in Arabic, I guess, Qasr uh, al I guess in Arabic and uh, in Latin would be Mentis Castellum. Anyway, welcome back. It's Saturday, June 11th. And in this episode, we're going to talk about an email that I received earlier today, or last night, from a reader in Australia. And I get a lot of emails like this, basically the type of email from a young guy, seems directionless, seems adrift, looking for general guidance, but doesn't really know how to get himself moving. So I'm going to read some excerpts from his email, and then talk about some guidance that I think he needs to hear, whether he knows it or not. He says, Dear Quintus, first, thank you for giving the world your vast knowledge and wisdom, especially to young men as we live in a time where we need it the most. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. He says, I am 23 years old, turning 24 this year, born in Australia, first generation from immigrant parents. He says, I just conquered anxiety and depression after having a multitude of thoughts about my life that nobody else could understand or empathize with. As a child, I grew up mostly around my older sister and mother. My father was not not present due to his own personal demons. Due to a lack of male guidance and loneliness, I am struggling to cultivate myself into a grounded, masculine man. In other words, I have detected the problems. However, taking action and finding solutions is now the challenge. And he goes on to say a lot about things that he's read on the internet that I won't go into. But... Essentially, here's some some more quotes. He says, The problem is that there are these recurring themes, even after finishing university, and it needs to stop. Every activity I start for learning, my mind comes up with a hundred reasons of why you should not do this or take it to the next level. Extreme fear of success and failure. So I ended up being in a case where I'm chasing ten rabbits and catching none. I have a high IQ and I am extremely self-aware. However, I feel that this has also crippled my ability to take action and getting in motion. I waste a lot of time because I do not know what to do with myself. I come back home from work and I literally do not know what to do with myself. Sometimes I just sit there and stare at the ceiling or fool around with my smartphone. I would love to keep myself busy and productive. But blah, 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 blah. I don't know how to do that. I feel futile the world is coming to an end, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Now here's a good sign here in this litany of woe. He says, I I will be traveling to Europe this year to explore the world by myself, as I have been codependent with my family due to financial circumstances. And then again, I do not want it to be spending on alcohol and shallow experiences. I am even hesitant to booking a ticket, which I have not yet done. I get shallow basic advice from friends and other websites on the internet telling me that I need to game women, I need to get a girlfriend, or other diversions will clear up my mind, blah, 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 blah. Uh, So that's the gist of it. Basically, he's lost. He's like, I chose to email you because I am lost, and whatever your advice may be, I am sure it will help. I do not know where to start, and the clock is ticking. Damn right it is. I apologize for my incoherent gush of life experiences. All right. Well, let's see if we can make heads or tails of this, and if we can help this guy out. You know, the first impressions that I get from reading an email like this is I receive a lot of these. And as I said before, this is basically falling in the category of the idealistic, chomping at the bit young guy who doesn't really know where to begin. And, you know, in so many ways, I kind of wish I had some of these guys in front of me personally, because there's only so much you can do with the spoken medium on the Internet. I think if I were delivering uh, a talk to them in, in, in public or it, it directly face to face, it would make more of an impression. Because when you're standing in front of someone looking at, looking at them in the eye and the inflections of your voice, the movements of your body. You can convey so much more. But we have to do the best we can being, you know, having the resources that we have at our disposal here. So the first thing I want to tell this guy is first just calm down and cut the histrionics. 
All right. There's a lot of drama in this email. There's a lot of, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Everything is terrible. I don't know what to do. I feel motivated, but I'm having a hard time getting motivated. Uh, this is normal. A lot of young guys, when they're, they're in that transition period from getting out of their family's house, when they're getting away from the skirts or uh, shadows of their elders, of their mother or father, they go through this growth phase. So this is normal. Okay, so just relax, cut out the drama. Uh, it, things are going to get better. This is not the end of the world. You're going to be fine. All right, but there's certain things that you need to keep in mind. And I can say this because I have the advantage of perspective. That's the real advantage that someone a little bit older has is the advantage of perspective who's been through all these things before. There's a tendency that young guys have that I've noticed where they worry about all these externalities and internet chat rooms and forums are filled with neuroses and obsessions and worrying about all these externalities that don't matter. The, you know, the politicians are doing this, uh, the women are doing this, and the media is this, and, and, and uh, the cosmic rays are bombarding the earth, and everything is coming to an end. You know, who gives a shit? Okay, nobody fucking cares. Nobody fucking cares. The only person that cares about you is you. And once you understand that, then things become so much clearer. And it's hard to really understand that, to really internalize that when someone just tells you. You have to see it for yourself. Nobody can really convert you to that idea by just persuasion or explanation. You have to experience it for yourself. And you will. You will. After you get pounded on the head a few times in the real world, you will understand it better than I or anyone else can explain it to you. The only one that cares about you is you. All right. Success comes... And progress comes when you realize that no one is going to help you. People can point you in the right direction. People can equip you with the tools you need to do the job. But ultimately, the only person that can walk through those pearly gates, the only person who can actually get his ass moving, who can apply bridle and stirrup and spur to the animal, is you. So you've got to get moving. You've got to do something. Stop worrying about all the cogitations in your mind. Stop worrying about your malaise, this, this lingering feeling of ennui that you have with your uh, mother or father or sisters. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. The only one that's going to care about you is you. So you've got to get moving. That's the other point I want to make. Get moving. Do something. Motion and momentum create energy. And when you're in motion, when you're moving forward, things are going to naturally start to happen. They may not be the best things, but at least you'll be doing something. The best thing in this entire email that you said was you were planning on going on a trip to Europe. Do that. All right, I'm telling you right now, do that. Don't write me again saying that you canceled the trip or you can't go or you rethought about it. Do that. You're going to Europe this summer. That's my direction to you. Do that. You need to get outside of your head. You need to get out from up inside your head and all these thoughts and impressions that you think are so important. And you need to feel the stimuli of the external world. And that will reduce a little bit of this self-centered, uh, you know, uh, maybe self-masturbatory thoughts that you have. And I'm not criticizing you that much, a little bit, but not that much, because I think these are normal in a lot of young guys. But I'm trying to motivate you to shake you out of this generalized malaise that you seem to be experiencing. And you can do it by changing your environment. Changing your environment accomplishes so much. You need to break out of those old patterns. You need to break out of those old cycles. You need to break out of the people who have been holding you back and pulling you down. You need to break out of the patterns that you have been ingraining yourself with, almost like a runner forming a groove in the ground or in the ice. 
and you need to change your environment. You would be better off if you volunteered to go uh, work in a mine in Perth somewhere. You would be better off if you volunteered or uh, joined an expedition to go to Chad or Mauritania and build bridges or work as a, uh, a medic uh, helping uh, sick people. And then you'll realize what real problems are. Because let me tell you, you don't have, you don't have uh, that many problems. you got no problems, kid. you got no problems. The problems are in your mind. What you need is a kick in the ass. That's what you need. You need to get outside from your whining and your complaining and get your fucking ass moving. That's what you need. Okay? You don't have any problems. Your problems are mild compared with others. You know, you have to appreciate and understand that you have the power to create your own life and your own happiness. Only you can do that. No one else can do that for you because nobody else gives a shit. Nobody gives a fuck. All right. So it comes down to motivated. How motivated are you? How badly do you want it? You know, you say you want it, but do you really want it? You know, it all comes down to priorities. If I were there and I pressed a, a Mossberg shotgun against your kneecap and I said, you're going to fucking do this or I'm going to blow your goddamn kneecap off, I think you would find a way to get it done. And all of a sudden, the priorities would be rearranged very quickly at that point. So that's the example that I'm using. But, but you get the point. You get the point. Okay, you get the point. It comes down to priorities. You got no problems. You know, I'm watching a movie right now called Fires on the Plane. It's called Fires on the Plane. It's a Japanese film made in 1959. The director was um, Kon Ichikawa, I think is the guy's name. Kon Ichikawa. And it basically follows the story. It's, it's, a, it's a, a drama based on a World War II story. It follows a Japanese soldier named Tamura. He's a, a Japanese soldier who's stationed in the Philippines. He's mentally and physically depleted, and he suffers from tuberculosis. And, of course, his unit is being squeezed by the enemy, which was obviously the British and the Americans. And he's trying to survive. And all around him, he sees carnage and death and starvation and hardship. And... His misfortune is he's suffering from tuberculosis, and so he can't really do the work that all his other soldier comrades do. And you want to know what his CO told, his commanding officer told him? He said, you're a burden to the unit, go back to the hospital. And if the hospital doesn't take you, kill yourself. Here's a grenade. Blow yourself up. Nice advice, huh? How would you like to get that advice? How would you like to get that advice? You're a burden, and you need to get out of my sight, or else you can go kill yourself. How'd you like to get that advice? And this guy had to deal with that. Because in those days, in the, in the Japanese Imperial Army, you weren't allowed to get sick. You weren't permitted to show weakness. It wasn't allowed. You know, Japanese soldiers, when they got sick and were confined to bed, they had to sit at attention in bed with their arms by their sides. Now, that's an extreme example, and I'm not saying that we should precisely emulate everything the Japanese did, but you know there's a lesson in there somewhere, and there's a lot to be said for endurance of pain. And I've talked about that in my books, and I think you need to go and reread some of my books. You need to reread 37, Pantheon, Pathways, Stoic Paradoxes, because I talk about this. I wrote those books for a reason, and... The stories in there, the examples in there, are inspiring examples. And if you read them and reread them, the lessons will leap out at you off the page, and then you will know. Because no one is entitled to happiness as if it's some birthright. No one is entitled to be safe and secure and smug and comfy in their bed with their thumb in their mouth. You know, I'm not going to wheel a tray of milk and cookies across the sea to you and pat you on the head and tell you everything's great and just get on the internet and start uh, selling uh, whatever scam of the scam of the day on the internet is. That's not what I do. 
You can go to the other knuckleheads to hear about that. You know, they'll take your money and they'll tell you a bunch of bullshit. And you'll be right back to where you started. I'm going to tell you the real deal. You don't have any problems. You need to get your ass moving. Get out there on the road. Get out there to Europe. Work. Start working. Throw yourself into opportunities and, and jobs and hardships. And then you'll start to get a better appreciation of what life is really all about. You know, there's a great movie called Cop by James, well, well, starring James Woods. Great actor. There's a great monologue in that movie, Cop. You should go see it. Go check it out sometime. I think it came out in 1987 or the mid-80s uh, during James Woods' prime. And there's a great dialogue, or I'm sorry, a monologue in there where James, James Woods plays this hardcore cop who makes, he's so hardcore, he makes Dirty Harry look calm and reflective. And there's a scene in there where James Woods is talking to his daughter and he's telling her a bedtime story. And in, instead of telling her conventional bedtime stories, He's telling her stories about offenders, about criminal offenders and how he put them away. And his wife is not happy about that. And she says, hey, she's just a little girl. Why are you burdening her with those stories? And of course, Jimmy Woods freaks out and he gives he gives one of the great speeches. <laughs> you really got to hear it. It's a great speech. I don't remember the exact word, but it goes something like this. He says, he says, they're all little girls. He says, they're all little girls. Let me tell you something that you don't understand. They're all little girls. Every girl that's out there hustling her ass off for some pimp who winds up uh, a junkie or, uh, or dead in some garbage disposal was a little girl. Uh, and he basically says, it, it, it all starts back when they're just little girls. When they're sat on their, dad, when they're sat on their daddy's knee and they're told and taught that they're entitled to happiness like it's some birthright. He says uh, something like, crushed expectations, it's the greatest killer, the greatest woman killer of all time. Crushed expectations. And he says, I see it every day of my life. He says, that's what you don't understand. When to stop perpetrating the myth that ruins their lives. Now, he was referring to women in that, in that little speech, but it, that that speech could just as easily be applied to men because there are men that are also coddled out there being coddled and being fed a bunch of nonsense too that they're entitled to happiness. Nobody's entitled to happiness. And I think crushed expectations are the biggest uh, killer of both men and women. You know, it doesn't have to be just women. It could be anybody. So that's my point is nobody owes you happiness. Nobody owes you anything. Because the only one that gives a shit about you is you. And you've got to find inspiration in your own achievements and in the achievements of others. Another tip that might help you is to try to get outside of your head, man. You've got to get outside your head. And you can do that or begin to do that by taking on a belief that's something bigger than you are. You know, study philosophy, study religion. I don't know what religion you are. It doesn't matter. Study any of the major world religions. Whatever religion you grew up with or you were born into, maybe learn more about that. Maybe by connecting with that or learning about that, you will be able to adopt in some way components of a belief system that is bigger than you. Because if you can believe in something bigger than you, it gives you strength. You're able to prostrate yourself before... A higher ideal and by surrendering your own weak ego and weak will to a higher will you will be able to derive strength from that and I offered some thoughts along those lines in my book Pantheon where I devoted a, a, an entire chapter to the Aeneids Plotinus's Aeneids and Neoplatonism and I explained why I thought that was a belief system that men should check out. And not many people are willing to look into those sort of things because it's difficult, but I think it's very rewarding. And that's what I would advise you to do, is to look at that. Because it all comes down to priorities. If it is important to you, if these things matter to you like you say that they do, you will find a way. You've got to force yourself to find a way. But you know what? I think you're going to be fine. 
I think you're going to be all right because even though I'm giving you kind of a hardcore type of talk, it's the type of thing you need to hear, type of thing you need to hear. But you're doing generally the right thing. You've identified the problem. You know that you need to get outside of your head. You've planned a trip to Europe. And I think if you do that and the experiences that you have there, if you appreciate them, you will draw on that for the rest of your life. And hopefully that will be the start of a lifetime of travel experiences and language learning experiences. Get outside your head, man. You know, get outside your head, calm down and do something. The advice that really works in life is not fancy. There's no rabbits out of the hat. There's no magic wands. There's no bells and whistles. There's a hell of a lot of brute work out there that's involved in living life. And it never ends. But you know what? You're up to it. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Because at the end of the day, life is glorious. Things are glorious. We're surrounded every day by wondrous and beautiful things. And I'm looking out the window now on the second floor of my house and I'm seeing trees sway in the wind. And I'm listening to the gentle rustling of those leaves as they sway in the wind. And I say to myself, my God, this is incredible. All this incredible beauty around us and we hardly even notice it. What does it really matter? The tornadoes, the earthquakes, the avalanches of the world, when all this is part of some cosmic scheme, maybe. And you can really get a great feel for that ethic in Seneca's great book, uh, Natural Questions, Questiones Naturales, Natural Questions. I've talked a little bit, a bit about it on my website. I wrote an article about it. You might want to check it out. But it's, it's Stoicism in a different way. Stoicism derived from observations of the natural world and how we can get to a sense of peace with ourselves by observing the wondrous phenomena of the natural world. Maybe I should translate that book too. Maybe I should do that one. That's one that's uh, not very well known. Once, I'm, uh, once I get on duties out, which is coming out here at the end of, uh, end of this month, maybe the first week of July, end of this month. So you get the idea. All right, enough said. Get your ass out there, get moving, and check back in here with me in about 30 to 60 days and let me know what you've done. And I want to hear progress. All right, I want to hear progress. That will conclude our podcast here at Fortress of the Mind. This is Quintus Curtius, and this podcast was brought to you courtesy of Fortress of the Mind Productions. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.